Thanks, Thanks Dave. Dave. Good Thank mail, you. man. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the locker room of Con Edison. Now for the next 30 minutes, hang on. Standing room in the back, you know, I've always said if you're gonna stand, it's good, because sitting too long, I'm sitting on my IQ, I find it very difficult. So in coaching, we found a couple of really important rules. Uh, first of all, there's no place I'm prouder to go than to the shores of America. Your city, your community, stands for what we're all about. From a kid, grew up in the Midwest, grew up as a baby boomer, I watched post-World War II, I watched everybody build chimneys, I watched Lake Erie get poisoned. In college, I couldn't go skiing, I couldn't eat the fish, we couldn't play football on the beach, and then I watched my Cuyahoga River in Cleveland catch fire. We've been through it all, and we're resilient, and we are a land of innovation. That's what our founding fathers taught us. Seems to be inherent. People come overseas, because they know only in America. Now, we got to get on with a really tough assignment. We've learned over the years that we're better together than apart. Community is the key to sustainability. We learned divide and conquer. So all of you people that are in this locker room, look around you. That person next to you, He's counting on you. Can you do the right thing? We've learned, whether it's sport or whether it's business, oh, by the way, did you notice? Sports become a good big business. Did you notice? Gatorade used to be a sport drink. Now it's a big business. You ought to see the energy that goes into food and food processing. So if it's true, these third world countries are what we call developing, did you notice their energy consumption? Did you notice their energy production? Well, America, New York City, let's become now the new leader. Thanks to Con Edison, we have got one stable, big player that's provided us a landscape now to produce. Energy efficiency is not an easy phrase. Energy efficiency is, coach, what is it? How do you see it? It's invisible. Energy efficiency is not an easy thing to talk about. Everybody can talk about it. Now let's go on the field. Let's put it out there. Oh, by the way, as your coach, I got to be on the sideline and make sure you win. I come from the streets. I born the company Professional Supply. My wife said, what are you doing? You're an aeronautical engineer. Mm, Phyllis, because buildings don't have wings and don't have wheels, it doesn't exempt them from Mother Nature's wind tunnel. It doesn't exempt them from the 747 we designed. People still got to get in and get out like they do the office building. So I developed a little company. I named it Professional Supplies so it would be interpreted as just a nice little humble middle value add machine. And with that, I'd like to now produce a lot of information. One thing about coaching I want to share with you. You can coach with the threat and the fear of failure. Or you can coach with the vision of winning is not anything less than, and you can inspire. One of the things we found out in coaching, especially kids, some of the schools I'm in, is I found out that the D and C student can learn a 500-page playbook if they're inspired. Have you any clue your IQ, what happens when you're pumped? I can't measure your potential. You know, go take the SAT and PST and all that stuff and take your final, but were you pumped? So the goal here in coaching is a really difficult task. I got to get you people fired up because this community and the person sitting beside you, she or he is counting on you. Are you going to do the right thing? You capable of doing it. So in getting to work with you, we've got a lot to cover, but at the end of the day, Energy efficiency is about your attitude. Energy efficiency is about your attitude. Coach, what's attitude? Well, it's the sum of your beliefs. Oh, well, I don't believe in some of this thing. Now listen, 
when you go in that room and you see Con Edison's best, 70 exhibitors are in that room, these people thrive and live to provide you innovation. Coach, what's innovation? It's not invention. It's innovation. Innovation, it's taking the genius of what already has been invented and utilizing it in a different way. So when you're in that room today, remember your goal of being here is how can I change my attitude? And that is filling yourself with some new beliefs. <clears throat> now, for you people that are in the locker room that want to take the field to New York City and play, there it is. Your attitude is one thing. How's your leadership? How are you? Do you intimidate the people that work for you? Do you say to your facility engineer, it better work? Is that what this is about? Or do you have leadership? Do you inspire? The guy that's taken care of your building for 12 years, is he the innovator? Or are you going to burden him with that decision? If it, it, so when we get into this, welcome to the word courage. Embrace innovation. High performance buildings is a speed event of embracing innovation, not invention. Innovation, energy efficiency is about systems and the creation of innovation, not about brands. We've got a ton of 4.0s in this country. We've got a lot of people that come here to get educated. We have a lot of people that come here to format how they can go back home and help their country. Now it's time, New York, stand up and be the planet's demonstrator. Have the courage to embrace rather than defend all your conventional thoughts and wisdom. <clears throat> How old are your beliefs? You know, we can paraphrase this in all kinds of different sports. How old are your beliefs? When's the last time you had to talk with yourself about your beliefs? Where do you see my story? Used to be pretty embarrassing. Now they recruited me to come here and tell you the story. It's so stupid. Yeah. I, I want to start out with a, a, a couple of little pieces of what I call basic thermodynamics. We do what we call energy study. You call it an energy model, a feasibility study. Did you notice Con Ed's willing to help you even fund that? And what you do, you go in and you analyze the DNA of a building. And you analyze how much energy needed the numerator of high school physics. And then you ask Mr. and Mrs. Smith or Mr. Building Owner or Con Edison, how much energy did they purchase? What? what, what? Energy needed, 1 over 10. For every unit of energy I needed, are you telling me I bought 10? Well, yeah. It's not an easy conversation to have. Thought it'd be a little courage and commitment in this. Why? Because that's my typical residential. One over 10 is my typical college university. One over 10 is all my hotels. I can get to 105 when I get some real good control systems in commercial office buildings, occupied, unoccupied. We start to give them, we born them a basic IQ. One of the best teachers I ever had in applied physics was an inventor, Lou Maggio here in New York, 1980, taught me how avionics, the dashboard of my airplane, can think. One over, one over five are all my commercial buildings that I find, and of course, manufacturing. Very, very efficient. I've seen it as high as one over three, 1,272 studies, 889 projects. I come from the field, I coach on the field, and I really have enjoyed the idea of, wow, being held accountable because I was wrong. These energy quotients are not make-believe. They're not to try to get you fired up, but most importantly, I'm not trying to depress you. I've got a college right now in Ohio that's got its steam boilers running. The steam don't know what it don't know, it just keeps using coal. The coal makes the water go to steam. The steam's out in the pipes. Well, there, there is no load. 
I've got buildings all through New York right now. The quotient is one over a thousand. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you understand what's the quotient of where you're getting after. In New York, you're full of capable people that can do that. Here's the dilemma, is your belief. Well, coach, it went through the meter. So if it went through the meter, I must have needed it. Coach, if it went through the meter and I must have needed it, I must have used it. So coach, I'm one over one. I'm 100% efficient, right? Tough business. Energy efficiency is not a sexy business. A solar array, a wind turbine, a digester, that's kind of cool. You can see it, you understand, it makes energy. The avoidance of energy, tough business, ladies and gentlemen. I thought Dave and John made it clear, their announcement to you this morning resonates big time. They're committed to helping you get through this invisible asset that could be yours. So, 2007, I'm 57 years old. Right, I'm just a good old war horse from the baby boomer days. And I have a little talk with myself. You know, you know, if man, if man were to just consider taking on the green machine protocol, you call it what you want, I want you to steal this and run. But if we were to consider, you know what? We're gonna take on a new design intent. For every three units of energy you need, I'm only gonna let you buy one. Whoa, coach, whoa, wait, whoa. what are you talking about? You better learn how to recycle a couple and or get some renewable energy plugged into the equation. You don't have to have a lot. You don't have to have solar arrays out in the fields on, DC, on, on AC inverters. You can bring solar array right to the retail side of your meter and put it right into your lighting because I got to burn lights during the day. This is what we do. A megawatt of solar cost you four million bucks today. Do you people realize 30 months ago it cost nine million? Today it costs four million. A megawatt of thermal solar cost you $6,900. Oh, did I forget to tell you? Thermal solar is pretty cool. You can store it. We love taking photovoltaic and putting it in a battery and having that battery on standby, DC battery, and we charge into an AC motor at peak load demand. Great job, like a one year payback. So it's innovation, it's strategies, it's getting out of the box. Invention is one thing, innovation is another. Green machine protocol, whoa. Now, if I go to three over one, and according to Vice President Gore in Inconvenient Truth, global warming is man-made, and if we're gonna reverse it with man-made engineering, hmm, we gotta do it in facilities. It's not about automobiles, it's about facilities. And if you were to consider that from this point forward, I will use more energy than I buy, if you were to truthfully sit and have a talk with that belief, do you realize, folks, only with your help, we reverse global warming? Oh, coach, I don't believe in global warming. The parts per million of CO2, it, I don't believe all that hog. Okay, then don't. Only in America. Everybody jumps on, you know, where we're going. And I agree with you in the federal deficit and some politics. But all President Obama's doing is executing federal landscape and financial incentives that were made by the other party. We're all in this together. This isn't about a Democrat versus a Republican. This is about, are you interested in using more energy than you purchased? And renewable counts on that. The goals today, buildings don't have wheels, they don't have wings. Oh, but coach, they're square. 
because they're not in when mother, you know, they're not going down the highway at 50 miles an hour. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Do you understand what wind coefficients, eddy currents, high pressure, low pressure does to the energy consumption? Well, no, coach, how do you find that out? Oh, wait a minute, that's right, I forgot. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when we drive our car, we've got a real-time dashboard, don't we? Did you know that every night you drive your car, you know how much gas is in the tank? Some of you even know how many miles you put on the car today. It's part of your expense report. Did you ever stop to think you even know how many gallons per mile you used today? Especially when you go to the gas pump and fill up and you watch the price of energy. Now let's go to your building. So today, did you go home? And did you look? How'd your house do? Did your house buy more energy than it needed? Coach, I don't know. I'll get the fuel, I'll get the energy bill in a month. Now you're getting it? There's no more excuses. The experts are in that other room. You people could be a planet demonstrator. Let Con Ed provide you the locker room and the stadium to play. If you don't want to play, take a seat and watch. It's really important that you're here for a reason. My coaching points to you this morning are because of you. The goals that you have here are about innovation, not invention. I'm not asking you to be a guinea pig. It's really important it's innovation because why? Because investors will finance your job for you. So, a couple of things I want to share with you. 1918 constructed courthouse. Old worn out building, sandstone, 22 inch walls. Yep, you're looking at him. Oh, Coach Kaiser ran into this. County commissioner said, Tom, what do we do with it? We tear it down. Long came the uh, historical society. Mr. Kaiser, don't let him tear it down. You know what we ought to do? You know what we ought to do just once? Take our time, save our opinion, and get in there and do a thermodynamic test. So I did. Spent two weeks in that building. It's the most energy efficient building I've ever been a part of. Built in 1918. Unbelievable. Thank God I did that, because when I was at the west wing of the White House, giving a little talk, I ran into Gus Speth, the Dean of Environmental Studies at Yale. And when Dean heard this speech, he said, Mr. Kaiser, you gotta come to Yale. Maybe you can teach us, show us, what do we do with all these beautiful old constructed buildings? Well, let me tell you, Yale should be, right now, the demonstrator of the most efficient planet on Earth, a biopsy of community. Their old buildings are excellent. You can't build them today. Remember, don't get confused about some old construction that you can't build today because you can't afford it. Modular chillers. We didn't put one chiller in a building. We put six chillers in the building. Step fired them. We have small FLA loads. We could bring them on with DC currents. Oh, by the way, they all have the same parts crib. And if a chiller failed, you're not out of cooling. It just step fired to the next chiller. Biophilia, boy, was that a, did I get scrutinized? Biophilia, you know what that all is, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, you call your landscaper. Hi, I'd like you to come and give me a proposal for landscaping. No, no, in the building. Yeah, no, I'd like to put plants in the building. Why? Oh, because when we were in seventh grade, we were taught that a tree exhales oxygen, inhales carbon dioxide. We were taught in fifth grade that grass and plants that the wife has in the house, my mom had in the house, yep, they exhale oxygen, they inhale what I exhale. We were taught that that's called harmony, human life with the environment. I was taught that when I was a little dude. You know, right before I got interested in football and baseball and all that, I, I was taught a little bit of science, trying to develop my IQ. It came full circle on me 47 years later. Do you know what biophilia does to this room if it's ex executing oxygen while you're now producing high concentrations of CO2? It saves you in about three, two to three months your heating or cooling makeup air bill. Boom! The payback is 
that quick. If it's done right, if it's measured right, I'm not the genius that developed an oxygen analyzer or a CO2 meter. I didn't do that. I'm not smart enough. I'm a C-plus student. You go get 4.0 guys to do that for you. And that's the way you run business. That's what makes this world go around. That's the way you utilize our IP. <clears throat> this one's pretty scary. John F. Kennedy high rise. This one's pretty scary. Went in and they had three steam boilers. I didn't know one was a backup. Why? Because they were all running. It's a cold winter day, 32 degrees, blowing snowstorm. Well, Mr. Building Owner, Manager, I'd like to take out these three steam boilers, four million BTUs a piece, and I'd like to replace them with 40 hot water boilers. What? Coach Kaiser, have you lost your mind? Yes, sir. Why would I do that? Well, I'd like to save you energy. See the steam boilers come online? They make steam. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, steam is our accepted practice in the United States. Everybody, our cities, our towns, our universities, they all got steam right here in their blood vessels. But it can't think. Did you know it's only 32 degrees outside? We don't need all that energy. Right now, you're running 1 over 200. What's 1 over 200? Oh, it's an energy quotient. See, now you get it. You got to educate. You got to spend a little time and educate. Coach, coach has got to get put the playbook on the marker board. This isn't about a D student can't learn the play. Not if he's inspired. So what you're here about, as I heard John say, he applauds all of you. Con Edison is only as good as you make it become. This thing went from three steam boilers to 40 hot water boilers, but here comes the bombshell. Energy needed. I did a takeoff of the building. I'm just a stupid aeronautical maintenance engineer that I didn't follow my frat brothers. I decided to get in the material science of buildings. The building needed 4 million BTU, not 12. How do I go tell that to the architect engineering firm? Didn't want to hear it. But, 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 I just, look, I just, out, no way, we will not support that kind of hybrid. So I went back to the building manager and said, I'll guarantee it. What are you going to do? I'm going to lie to my bank. I got an idea. Now listen, if I lie to the bank, I'm going to get me a line of credit, and it, you, know, you know, I'll get this money set aside, I'll put it in escrow, so that if the system design don't work, I'll give you your money back and put the boilers back the way I found them. Are you kidding me, Kaiser? You'd bet your farm on a stupid energy efficiency project? But Mr. Customer, I'm going to reduce your energy consumption over the years 72%. Three-year payback. So I did it. Eight of them 40 boilers, that total 4 million BTU. Eight of them never fired. You know why, internal heat gain. You know why, I recovered the hot water wastewater in the sewer. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, this hotel is using 30,000 gallons to go down a shower drain. You take a shower at 104 degrees. Hot damn, that's great energy to put back in the heat, back into the domestic water coming in the building. Four month payback. Just on, just on domestic hot water today. How much domestic hot water does New York City use, do you think? Then, of course, like I told you, here comes biophilia. What? Well, I'd like to do some landscaping in the hallway. 132 apartments there. And what I was thinking, you guys, we put some... You mean, Kaiser, you want to plant grass? I'm like, no, no, I don't want to do that. But listen to me, I know some people that are really good at putting flowers and plants in our building. And then what we do is we measure the oxygen. Then we hook the oxygen up to an algorithm. What's the algorithm? Oh, it's high school physics. And the algorithm 
now knows how much makeup error to not bring in the building and not compromise quality of air. Biophilia in New York is a no-brainer. You all would be brilliant at it. So now the board of directors says, well, now that you turned off that steam, I'm the plant manager. I'd like you to come to my paint plant. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. I can't get in a factory. So, okay. I'll go study it, like I did the courthouse. All right, let's do a thermodynamic analysis. Energy needed, that's all I care about. What's the energy needed per 60 seconds of 8,700 hours a year? Ford, yeah. Um, if I could, sir, um, that coal boiler out there, you got very good Navy stationary engineers. You could eat off the boilers. Your steam system second to none. Ford, I'm not here to criticize. I'd like to talk energy, though. You hired me to do an assessment, yeah? Ford, I'd like to turn off your chimneys. We don't need steam. What? I didn't know I just stepped across a suicide plank. So as you all will, maybe, maybe some of you have witnessed, uh, participated, it's called pushback. I had two security guards, and they politely saw me to my car in the visitor parking lot. A year later, the phone rings. Mr. Kaiser, you still in business? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Kaiser, you still serious about that cockamamie pro uh, proposal you gave us a year ago? Uh, yes, sir. You still think we could shut off steam? Uh, yes, sir. Coach, we've got 40 studies here by the big boys of Detroit telling us that coal is $1.88 per million and natural gas is three and a half times, two and a half times that. Coach, you're proposing we turn off coal and go to natural gas. Are you sure? Are you sure you want to bet your farm on that? Yes, sir. I'd never make a proposal that I don't want to be accountable for. I hope them 70 exhibitors in there feel the same. You shouldn't be a guinea pig. You shouldn't burden the transfer of title of something that don't work. And by the way, if you have the right accountability in the teeth of your agreement, ooh, wait do you see how much better it really works. Fear of failure? Or was I inspired? So, <clears throat> no steam, no chimneys, no, no ductwork? Well, you know, my frat brothers and I, we designed the 747 way back. As you know, it's in the Smithsonian. That's how old I am. I'm a dinosaur. I turned 60 last month. The Smithsonian is no longer a, a great audacious goal by Boeing. It used to be. 1972, that was critical. That plane worked. More importantly, I just said, Ford, yeah, you're a 25-acre plant. Yep, your 35-foot ceilings. You know, your 60-foot ceilings in the high bay. Yeah, Ford, you're just a 747. What? I'm going to treat you like a 47. I don't need duck work. We turn off the seven and a half miles of duck work. Oh, Ford, I forgot to tell you. I think we're going to reduce your horsepower load by 2,500 horse. We don't need to blow air through duck work. Kaiser, you've got to be nuts. Okay, Ford, I'll lie to my bank. Here's what I'll do. So you know the rest of the story. My balance sheet was getting a little better. So now I put $3 million into an escrow. That way, if I fail, obviously everybody came. Boy, you should have seen this. Like 1,200 people come from Detroit to see this fail. <clears throat> convincing the UAW and convincing them about this radical change I also employed them. They're some of the finest skilled trades in the world. And I said to the UAW, this isn't about me. This is about Ford and you making it happen. So guess what they did? They put the system in for me. It's awesome. By the way, under budget. Then the other thing you can see there with data in, I missed the payback. I thought it'd be a three-year ROI. I didn't realize that when you abandon what I abandoned, I was going to abandon all this electricity. Back then, I didn't know no better. <clears throat> and 
energy efficiency. 1998, Ford said, hey, Tom, after 17 years of working in our plants, if we had it to do over again, what would you do different? Oh, thanks. I love look back. You see, if you look back and recast, now you can look forward and forecast. That's all you got to do. Look back at your, the last 12 months of your life and say, if I had it to do over again, what the hell would you do different? Wow, maybe I'm going to get that done in hole 11. Ford, don't give me one plan at a time. You own a lot of buildings. And the good news is they're all inefficient. They're terrible. Right, that's a hard conversation to have. This is not about me. This is about the attitude of Ford saying, you know what, Tom, you're right. Let's go get them. And we went and got them. 1998, we went after it. It was no longer about being a vendor. It was about partnering up with Ford and being accountable. By the way, if you keep reading that slide, Ford didn't come up with any dollars, did they? I needed $150 million. There's investors in this country and in this room that will invest in that job. Energy efficiency through Con Edison is already becoming a NASDAQ. Don't get caught up in the bad economy. Don't get caught up in Wall Street. There's investors out there that really are after this, right here in New York. I want to make sure you know that. I also want to make sure you know now they're really interested in how your business is doing. 1998, I get to meet Vice President Gore. He's in to see Bill Ford. Oh my, Kaiser, what do you do? I don't know. He taught me this slide. Here's the impact you have on the environment. This is the impact you have. Well, I'm a baby boomer, right, Mr. Vice President? I didn't know that. Well, why don't you go have a talk with yourself about your beliefs? Now I do. That was 1998. I'm not proud of that, ladies and gentlemen. But at 50 years old, I sat down and had a little talk with me about my beliefs. Look at this one. A grass roof in the Rouge? Come on, you're kidding me. You're going to put a grass roof in a manufacturing plant? You ought to see how well that worked as it impacted the air conditioning bill. You ought to see how well that worked on a windy day when the wind loads across the roof actually reduced the heating bill. So what we got here is a lot of different strategies. In the liquid chimney, all the different things are all very, very possible. Frito-Lay said, you're going to do what? I'm going to put a liquid chimney on your French fryer that makes Frito-Lay corn chips. First platinum award building in the world. That's 2011. So today, it's about you people. Grab a hold of it and run. Make sure you're dealing with good people. Energy efficiency is about good people, people that know their business. Business solutions are not easy. Because of the economic meltdown, I developed a solution called PowerDime. My CFO, Ben, is here with me, and my partner, Stonehedge, is here with me, David Probst. And, and what we have accomplished is take away the excuses. We don't need your money anymore. We don't need your money. What we need is your attitude. And with that, I just want to make sure I leave you with a very, very, very important word. Do not get into energy efficiency without finding and having accountability. Do, don't take on a burden you don't understand. Make sure you got somebody that's willing to be accountable at your side that truly understands what you're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to leave you with last statement. When you leave this room, you get in that room with them exhibitors, go get them and ask them this question. Hey, in the last 36 months, what's the most innovative strategy you've done? Where's it running? How do you like it? You proud of it? And watch what happens. Watch how you inspire them. So I thank you very much for your time. Con Edison, I thank you for the invitation to come out here and coach. And I look forward to seeing all of you. We'll be here throughout the day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you, Tom, for your insights and inspiration. You really summed it up perfectly. Now is the time for all of us to adopt the practices of energy efficiency and sustainability in order to remain competitive in today's commercial and industrial landscape. And yes, after today, you'll have a better understanding of how Con Edison can help you embrace this opportunity. Saving money, saving energy, saving the environment are the simple reasons to participate in Con Edison's commercial and industrial energy efficiency programs. The rebates and incentives reduce your capital investment and improve your bottom line. You also have access to a network of over 400 of our market partners, many of them here today in our exhibit hall. So please take advantage of the opportunity to, to attend our sessions, to visit our exhibitors, and to speak with our program team. Before we close this session, I'd just like to provide a quick overview of the day and address some housekeeping issues. Uh, following a brief break immediately after the opening session, the exhibit hall will open at 9.30 a.m., which I, I think is probably right about now, uh, featuring many of our market partners. Uh, we have five educational sessions taking place in the Mercury Ballroom beginning at 10 a.m. Details about the topics and speakers for each session are included in your program book. Uh, there will be a 15-minute break between sessions. Uh, please just make note the lighting and LEDs presentation originally set for 1 p.m is now at 11 a.m. and the efficient operations and retro commissioning presentation is now at 1 p.m. Uh, both are in the Mercury, Mercury Rotunda room. I think you'll really enjoy the Pitch Stop, our uh, products showcase in the Rendezvous Trianon. Uh, several exhibitors will be demonstrating some of their technologies and techniques that can help transform your facilities into high performance buildings. Uh, we'll be raffling off a $50 Visa gift card at the end of each session, so be sure to check that out. Sessions run from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Uh, lunch will be served outside in the Grand Ballroom foyer beginning at 11.45. And finally, at the end of the day, I'd like to invite you all to a um, reception in the Trianon at 4 p.m. Um, and it's for uh, networking, obviously. Networking is what makes this whole business happen. So we are ready to help you save energy, money, to reduce your emissions and to capitalize on your energy saving potential. Today is the opportunity to talk with us about your needs. We'll answer your questions, we'll provide you with more details, and we'll walk you through the application process. We're here for you today, so speak with me or any of our program staff, and we'll get you revved up for your own race toward high performance buildings. Thanks so much for spending the time with us today, and enjoy the summit.